All right, so the next style of handle, I already showed the upside down handle in another video. If you would like to do that for like say a cappuccino mug, you can do that. That's the upside down handle. Uh, you can even do a normal coil handle if you'd like to, but I'm gonna show you a dual handle or a double handle. So I'm gonna move my soup mug. And again, the reason we make a soup mug is just so that you can hold the handles on the side. Say you put really hot soup in or any hot contents or say you microwave something in it. You can grab the handles on the side and be able to uh, not burn your fingers. So I'm rolling out a coil and I want it to be as even as possible. So right here I can tell this side's a little thinner, this side's pretty even. So I'm going to cut off the thin side. Now I'm going to roll it flat. You could use these round if you wanted to. Um, you'll see more of what I'm saying in a minute once I get this flattened out. So again, you could keep it round if you want to. Um, I've had students do like braids, twists, all kinds of things with coils. Okay, so I've got it nice and flat, pretty even. I see one little bump right here, so I'm gonna flatten that out a little more. So now I'm gonna cut that right in half, or as half as humanly possible. Okay. So now I have two very similar handles, or at least similarly sized handles. Okay, and I'm gonna make, this side's already rounded. But this one is the one I cut, so I'm going to kind of round those just a little bit. I really only need to round one corner because I'm going to cut the other one off. So I'm going to line these up right on top of each other so that I can cut them the same. I'm going to slice, kind of round my rib. So now I have two pieces that are very much the same. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm going to pull them apart. I'm going to soften that edge just to make it look similar to the rest of the handle. Soften the other one. So the first one I don't have to pay too much mind to where I put it other than thinking about where and how it's gonna function. So I could just put it straight off the side, but it looks nasty. So I'm gonna do something a little more organized or a little bit more composed. But I'm gonna score kind of a horseshoe shape. Okay, and I'm gonna score the back side of my handle. Back side is just declared by you as the artist, whatever you think is best. slip, mostly water. So now I'm going to stick it on and really give a good amount of pressure on there. Okay, and then I just go back over it just to make sure it's a decent shape. Once I get one on there and it's compressed, I always like to take my paintbrush. I like the flat headed paintbrush. I get it wet in the bucket and then I take it, dab a little bit off, and I go underneath my handle. Mostly cleans it up, but it also helps with making sure the handle is going to stay on. It helps it stick. Um, sometimes I'll stick handles on pieces that are a little drier than I would like. Um, if it's really drier than I know it should be. Sometimes it'll crack, but um, this also helps distribute moisture back to the piece because I know this is brand new clay, my handle that I'm sticking on right now. And if I add water up there, it's adding water to the piece, which again could lead to cracking, but uh, also if it's still in the leather hard, hard phase, it helps with um, kind of re-moistening the piece itself. Also, you can kind of fix some of those little flaws um, with the wet paintbrush in the cutting. So I've got like some little sharp edges, I can go over those. You could blend these if you'd like to. Uh, some people just smash down or 
I've seen people use like a paintbrush, like say I push this down a little more. I could use the paintbrush and just wedge a little piece in there and I'll show you what it's doing in just a second. I could do something like that with the little divots in there. I could do them all the way across if I wanted to, any number of things. For the sake of a demo time here, I'm just going to use those two, clean this up slightly. And move on to the next side. So before I move to the next side, I want to get kind of the shape of this side. Sometimes I even tuck them under, but I, because I did those two divots, I can't really do that. So it's about that angle right there, and I want to go straight across. I'm going to flip this around. Make sure my handle is straight across from that first one. I also want, sometimes I put this on a banding wheel and I make a straight line all the way around so that I know where to put my handle. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use my trimming lines. You can see my trimming line right here, all the way across. So I know this handle was just above where I trimmed it to. Double check myself. Get a little score in there. Okay, add a little slip. Again, my slip's mostly water at this point. This is a different clay body than I'm, I usually use. I usually use LBM from Hardvark. Right now I'm using uh, Hopkins White. If you're wondering the uh, clay body out there on YouTube. Again, I added my slip. I'm going to press this on. Make sure it's centered before I compress. So it's always real rough work when you first stick it on there, but then I'm going to go through and clean it up. I tell my students all the time, it's always ugly when you first start, it's just a ball of mud. But we come around to it with enough refinement and enough care. So now I'm just kind of checking both sides. You can see this handle's a little bit lower, so I'm just going to lift it up before I compress it. This is like a really good uh, French onion soup bowl, chili bowl, anything that's hot really, but these work really well for that, especially if you're going to do French onion soup because uh, you can melt the cheese on there and it's, the handles are out of the way. You can still grab them without melting your hands off. So again, water on the brush, soften that up a little, go around, all the way around. Try to stay in camera view here, sorry. Now that it's stuck on there, I don't want to just kind of, I'm going to clean up, but I don't want to wing it as far as just guessing what the other shape was. Um, I've had students take a leaf too. They put a leaf in clay, they flatten the leaf on there, cut around it, and then they have a one whole leaf, but they'll cut it in half with their smooth or serrated rib, and they'll cut a nice straight line, and they have two halves to a leaf, and they can do that on either side. So again, I'm going to look at this one for reference. side. That looks like a little duck bill. Okay, and I do my two little divots. Uh, these divots too actually help it. Uh, it looks like it's just for looks, but it does help it seal to the pot as long as your dryness levels are on point as far as leather hard and, and wet. Brushing underneath it too sometimes helps me clean up some of the score marks that aren't exactly dead on where I wanted the piece or wanted the handle. Maybe I thought I wanted it there and it ended up uh, a little off as far as the marker goes. Okay, 
Okay, then I'll set it down, kind of double check and see how it's going to hold. Yeah, they're about equal. Make sure that it's going to hold well. So if I need to pull it up a little bit, I'll pull them up. Uh, sometimes they're just too low of a flap and I'm going to end up touching the bowl anyways, which defeats the purpose to having the handles. So um, I want them to be flowing up so that I can hold this whole thing, no matter how much weight's inside, uh, fitting, of course, uh, but to be able to hold it away from the pot and on the handles themselves. So you can see, still needs a little refinement, but there's the two handles and there's the other side. So again, I'll look at it, go over it, really, really detail it and get into it, but that is the double handle. Um, the other single handle would be like more of a cappuccino mug, but it also works as well. They're just a little harder to hold with one handle. So that's the soup mug with dual handles.